Hello boys and girls. In this video, you know, this is one of these videos where I step through some very simple code and um, manually verify some very nice uh, theorems, in this case in number theory, some prime-ish kind of relations. Um, this video is particularly interesting to you if you don't know anything about, you know, uh, quadratic reciprocity and or the dilemma you see here on screen you know if this is not second hand to you then um, you might uh, benefit from seeing um, very simple basically primitive recursive checking and implementation of these concepts right so we are going to um, represent all the objects uh, relevant uh, to um, define and then check the validity of such theorems, right? That we have the signature of a permutation of this particular operation here. And um, I'm motivated to do that because um, a working colleague of mine is interested in yeah, quadratic reciprocity in some other field extensions and the code you will find on GitHub, but maybe um, you can toy around with that and extend it and then report back in the chat. Um, or maybe I will do that as well. We are going to see in this uh, video some class representing basically set n and then we do modular, modular arithmetic and I might extend it to, to this sort of more higher concepts. I have a bunch of uh, books uh, borrowed uh, from the library that I'm reading with my working colleague here, the classic uh, Neukirch, and there's the, the good old Lang. Um, this is the direction which this is going. And uh, reciprocity laws. It's not really, you know, I'm not usually to, uh, at home in this more discrete world. Um, most of my videos uh, <laughs> are over the reels in a sense. Um, but if you're interested in that, I, I might extend this code uh, comment below. Um, otherwise, this is just a very chill, right? I'm so, sort of I'm sort of in the runner's high mood at the moment and we're going to discuss this code together and we're wipe checking with these theorems that you might uh, be not familiar with um, if you watch this channel. Um, and with that said, I um, will give you a very basic motivation for the magic of these sort of objects. You see here, um, let's start. You have this function of a and p of two integers. Uh, p is going to be a prime number. And this has, you know, there's this definition that I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, such a fan wi uh, of, right? There's some uh, certain property and happens all in a sort of finite world you have this f finite field if you want and then there's some questions about some quadratic equation and then you assign plus or minus one i'm not a fan of it because it looks sort of ad hoc it makes more sense if you uh comment it from from a sort of here group theoretic perspective where you see this plus and minus one is the representation of a very simple group for example then it sort of makes more sense why these numbers pop up there but okay nonetheless this is sort of the standard definition uh, immediately there's this more historic or, uh, older definition or, or here in this case presented as a theorem uh, this is already sort of suspicious no um, it says that Given this function of two variables, th this represents sort of the yes no answer to a solution of certain certain equations. And then there's the degenerate case. There's also this other extremely simple to compute in principle uh, relation, right? You take the, the one number and you take it to the power of this. So if p is a prime, then it's um, uneven, you know, for primes bigger than two. And so this will be un, uh, an, an even number. You can divide it by two. So this is just some integer to the power of some other uh, natural number. And then you subtract p a lot of times before you're like shortly before zero. And then uh, firstly, this says, oh, if these are the same definitions, then apparently this uh, operation just gives you plus minus one and zero. And then not only that, but also this, this uh, the the value of this uh, magically tells you something about some some equations and we will see that in a second 
And uh, the the main f thing, like there's uh, this um, ultra famous uh, algebraic number theory result that we are also going to be verifying, not as a proof, but like just for some some finite values, basically how many finite values your computer can do. Um, we are going to discuss this code that ex does exactly that. We're going to like verify this sort of uh, curious uh, power relation here. But also, this is sort of the, the more the main focus, uh, this nice lemur and benefit is that you will see also the implementation and um, get uh, uh, more uh, closer to it than just reading the abstract uh, math book definition. You're actually going to implement it here. Okay, so um, I'm not going to discuss the uh, like hopping between mathematical contexts. So this is about modular arithmetic, but um, one main thing here is that this uh, symbol, this function symbol, this yes no answer to this question helps you also know without doing any uh, testing whether certain equations um, have solutions. And so this is what we have here. Okay, so we are going to, I, I'm going to randomly choose some uh, numbers, so some prime here and then, um, I don't know, eight. Okay. What I do here is the following. I have uh, two loops. I can, uh, you know, I can extend the, the range from minus thousand to thousand here and here. Um, this is just a range that is really of interest to us. Um, we have an equation here, or they could call this equation. Um, uh, okay, equation solved. It says if the equation has a solution, then this will be true. The equation is uh, x squared plus p times y equals a. And you think of uh, x and y as points in in uh, in set two, so the integer squared. This is sort of the the um, integers times the integers in two-dimensional grid. There's some points, and then we have the simple um, sort of parabola there. And the question is, does this have a solution? Are there points which fulfill this nice relation? And if there are some uh, solutions, then it will print. Yeah, there's this and this is a solution. If if not, then not. Okay. So we have chosen p seventeen a eight, and if we run this, then we see ah, there are some solutions. Okay. So uh, apparently the number thirty nine squared minus seventeen times uh, eighty nine happens to equal eight. Okay. And similarly twenty two squared plus minus 17 times 28 happens to be 8. Okay, so there we saw there are some solutions. Now let's change this thing to from 8 to 9, let's say. Run it again. Ah, there are still some uh, solutions here as well. Okay, so these are some solutions. So 20 squared minus 23 times 17 happens to be 9. Then uh, what did we have before? Um, I think it was 8, so let's do 10. Oh, there's no solution for 10, okay. Uh, 17, uh, 11 also happens to be no solution. 12, oh, there's also no solution. Okay, 13, ah, there's some solutions there. And f one more, 14. Okay, so we see there are some cases where there's some solutions and, and there are some cases where there are no solutions. And uh, through uh, the relation that I will not discuss here more in detail, but it's, you know, you can play around with it and find it out. Uh, here's a table of these values of this Lagrange symbol. And the magic is that computing this simple symbol exactly tells you also if this equation, this quadratic equation in set two has solutions. So we can uh, check this. Uh, what did we have here? So we said um, 17 it was, was our prime and A was eight. So here, 17, 8. Okay, this had the solution, right? Uh, 17, 8 had a solution. 79 also had a solution. And so this is uh, the pink thing. This is solution, solution. And then, right, we had a streak of three values not having any solution until 17, 13. And this is exactly this three minus ones here, right? And then we had a solution. And so this predicts that 
a 7 in 14 I think we already checked, but this for example predicts that 17 20 will not have a solution, but uh, 17 1, uh, 21 will have solution. So let's test. This will have no solution, no solution. And if I do 21, then this will have solution. Huh? Fairly magical, and I can and move around, and this just knows uh, if there's one. And um, as I said, the implementation for this function is just uh, taking the power. So I mean, I can I can also well, like compute this by hand here. So let's see, Python. We say um, 70 to the power of um, 21 minus 1 divided by 2 mod 17. Uh, not 17, mod... Uh, oh, I'm stupid. So it's not... It's this is 21 and this is 17, so mod 17 so um let's wrap this is an int so this being one means there was a solution and let's uh take for 20 instead of 21 we take um five okay so 17 five uh, mod five. Da, da, da. I'm confused. Oh no, yeah, I, I shouldn't be confused. So, um, this is minus one mod seventeen. Okay, so this predicts that um, for p seventeen a five there will be no solution. So seventeen five and if i go out and run it then there's no solution so uh there's the simple thing wh where you can check if there's a solution without actually testing all the values of the equation right this is this is the magic sorry I, this was a little bit of a long introduction here but so th this is th what it does and we are going to uh validate I'm just the rest of the videos is just walking through some very simple code and we're going to see how these this theorems uh, just happen to be accurate. So this was our motivation thing. Um, I will uh, actually delete these lines because we are over with the motivation. And uh, what the, the code, the rest of the code here does is assert basically this theorem. So I, I go here through the prime numbers all of the prime numbers and with all of the prime numbers I go uh, through different A's and then I will assert a bunch of theorems that we're going to test. Uh, what I also do here is because this is related I'm um, go, going through this uh, set I this is sort of you take the ring set and add an imaginary unit and then the prime factors in this object look more different than, than the other ones and I also print that we're going to see this in the code. Um, I tell you this because I will run it now. So if I run this, then what we see here is um, there is sort of validation. We go through all the um, n's. So these are did I write n? I could also write, of course, um, p. Um, okay. This uh, this assertion function again goes through uh, some loops, and then I have chosen the letter n there. But whatever. Okay. So I'm going through the different n's here, so n3, n5, n, n7, and then to uh, validate, uh, I'm going to step through this in much much slower in a second, right? But to validate this sort of um, this theorem, where you also take set n and have this um, uh, these operations. For this, you take the set n for any n, and then you um, apply this action by this element uh, viewed as sort of the multi multiplicative group, and then we will also get some some uh, characteristic number. This is, is the sign of the permutation, and it will also just happen to be this um, Lagrange symbol. So what you see here is me stepping through all the n's and stepping through all the um, the g's in this case. 
and applying this permutation and what you see here is um, for different values the permutation for example here uh, 13 so the, the first 13 numbers from 0 to 12 and then uh, uh, we, we will see that we have some permutations there and then we compute the characteristic of this permutation this is the inversion and it will be exactly the Lagrangian symbol as well this is what we are manually verifying and what we are going to see in this video okay um, so let's get to it as I said, it might be boring. I'm just going to step through some code, but then you have this template and you can work with it yourself. So um, first I have a bunch of generic uh, number theoretical functions and then I will be concerned with the ZN. So we have here um, a, literally a manual test if a number is a prime number, right? You can read this. Um, I decompose it because uh, sometimes the, the number two behaves a little bit different, so I need this, this sort of function. For complex number, uh, the norm um, in algebraic number theory plays an extremely crucial role because a lot of um, relations pass through it. That might also be maybe a chance to talk about the Dedekind uh, theta function. Uh, how do Americans pronounce Dedekind? Uh, I hope you know who I'm talking about. Uh, even if you have some weird pronunciation of that name um uh so that that thing in itself that you can make a lot of videos about it and so if you're interested in theta functions uh you know beyond uh, Riemann theta function let me know um here uh this there is this phenomenon where if you take the natural numbers and the primes uh are that essentially every second um, prime number if you look at the integers extended by imaginary unit every s a second prime number uh, again factors into two parts again uh, this is what we actually see uh, like here is just a hot um, like you know again ma manual brute force splitting up of these primes but you also see it in this list here so I, I said you know I'm, I'm walking through all the set ends all this um, rings and what i'm also doing here is for all these primes if they factor further than they do in the natural numbers then i write down the factors here so here you see oh the 13 is a prime number right but it's also uh, a sum of two squares as in um, pythagoras except this is not a square but the prime number here is sum of two squares and it means of course if you have imaginary units then uh, you see that this factor so 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 3 uh, minus 2i if you multiply it then you get exactly 13 so this is not a prime number anymore in this larger field and this plays a role in in this in these theorems that we're not like reciprocity and so on that we're not going to prove but um, it's relevant for that and so i just let, let it in this is part of the, the other code that i ha had been writing um so it might be interesting for you to know and here you see the brute force way to do this factorization i mean this is the stupidest you know just checking and then printing okay i have even here to do Okay, so what I uh, sometimes do, maybe that, that's of interest to you, um, especially if you're using pri uh, Python. I have some video where I talk about streams in Python before, right? So if you're, for example, um, if you're dealing with um, rational Cauchy sequences, right? If you're, uh, for some reason, uh, do, um, do a real number, mathematics or uh, theorems or arithmetic arithmetic or so you can represent real numbers as uh, Cauchy sequences of course and then it makes sense to use this Python um, streaming functionality where you have uh, like if you want endless streams and so what I often do is because um, I want to pop all natural numbers and then uh, not you know not fix a uh, finite list of natural numbers and and uh, go through all of them but I, I make an infinite list of natural numbers and then I just stop at whatever point I want if I even want to stop and so here, here you see how to do that you define uh, this uh, function which never returns but it yields this end and this way you 
make a stream, right? And then you can do anything about it if you want any subset of the natural numbers and you have a, um, uh, a terminating predicate like uh, is prime, then you just take the naturals and then you take the stream of naturals and you just reject all the um, naturals which are not prime and then you have a stream of primes, right? It's very simple and uh, but, um, works very nicely. Um, for this factorization that you saw here, um, among other things, uh, again, a brute force uh, function that finds prime factors. Um, I will not explain this, right? This is like literally a trial and error search. For um, the computation of permutations, right? The, as you saw, um, but here, right? so we here we have um, 13 numbers from 0 to 12. We're going to deal with permutation, which is just some bijection. In this case, the, the bijection is literally just given by multiplication with some number mod 13. And this happens to be a bijection. And here you see if the, in, the input is the range from 0 to, to 12, then um, you can capture this bijective function by just uh, naming the ordered list of outputs, right, the range of the function uh, plus an order. And so here you see these different permutations which you can interpret as these different bijections. And for that matter, uh, the way I just described it, we need this function range function, right? This basically set theoretically would correspond to replacement, right? You say, oh, there is this function, we we're going to dis define the function. And so the, the output exists, uh, this is just the, the, this thing. And um, we have the natural order on the natural numbers and we use this um, to speak of the ordered set before and after the permutation. Okay, very basic stuff. Then um, the uh, dilemma uh, is going to count inversions and the inversion is just defined like that for, we look at all uh, comparisons, all i and j, in this case, for one inversion, we're just looking at one i and j, some fixed i and j, right? So for example, we are going to look at the, fir the third and the sixth, right? Just some two random numbers, third and sixth uh, element uh, which are in order and then for a permutation if the output value of the third so uh, for example let's take this one at 13 left action by 5 we give this permutation uh, 0 first second third this is the uh, this is the, um, the output value of the uh, bijection on the number 3 number 3 is mapped to number, number 2 and the number six is mapped to the number four, five, six, four. So three and six are mapped to two and four. Three and six are in order. F four and two are also still in order. So this would not be an inversion, right? This is the definition here. So the definition of this, uh, does it even say that here? I think I have it here. Yeah, here you, you can read if you want uh, the definition of an inversion. The sign is uh, minus one times the number of inversions. We're going to count the number of inversions. And this will, if it is the case of permutations induced by the left action, uh, turn out to be the Le Chandre symbol. Okay. So um, the inversion is defined like that. And here we have a function which um, takes some permutation, in this case, capture some list, it takes the list and it also brute force just uh, collects all the uh, um, pairs which happen to be inversions, right? We go through all the possible pairs uh, in this thing. So, you know, he, um, we, we take all permutations. So this is basically a quadratic um, time loop. Um, and whenever this is an inversion, then yeah, return it and then I mean, this is like, extremely inefficient code, but the, the, the my point is to like, split up um, all the functions into in all these the you know from a sort of category theoretical category theoretical standpoint where we're we're seeing all the factors that that certain important functions uh, factor through, and the number of inversion is what we really 
I like it's not even what we really want to get we want to get the design but this is one ingredient this is what would be the n in this wikipedia page that we just saw right this would be this n and um for understanding sake i i split this up in a bunch of more complicated functions so here's the cardinality operation the length of the list is cardinality in this case um and this uh, simple function that you just saw, the permutation sign is going to be minus one times n, as you saw in the definition of Wikipedia. And um, then I have here some, some predicate to check if this is a permutation. I'm not even sure if I you actually use this in the code or if I just use it to sanity check, but okay. Um, and then I didn't find a nice place to put this, but you know, this to the power of p minus one divided by two. Um, if you get to generalization of the reciprocity theorem, uh, well, let me check something here. Yeah, okay. Um, then you will see uh, how things abstract to something more nicely. But uh, for this simple case, this is just this uh, exponent that without me proving any theorem just falls from the heavens. It's kind of a weird thing, but you know, this is what we, what we, uh, when when I did the manual check, if you remember, I I used exactly this sort of um, exponent, right? Um, this pops up not only in uh, this Gauss Gaussian <laughs> computation here, um, uh, wait a minute, Gauss came later after Euler, right? Um, so this Eulerian um, ex exponent, but it also pops up in the more Gaussian uh, reciprocity theorem here. Uh, you see, this is the same exponents. We're not again. We are not going to explain why, but they are related here. Okay. So uh, that's it. These are all these generic uh, definitions. Now comes uh, the modal arithmetic ones. I define a class which ca captures um, for any fixed n um, this this ring. We pass this n uh, in the initialization of the class we define some objects which are um, computed more often. So I, I remember the size. I remember the, what is called range here. Maybe I could also uh, call it domain. I call it range because in Python, the ordered uh, set or ordered object or iterator, iterator really, uh, is called range. Um, but um, I could also call it domain. It's basically just a collection of elements uh, the standard representation for this ring, right? And then I have a function. Um, I'm not sure if this is nice Python or not. I think you should use def more often, but here in this case, I just turned it into a lambda um, that takes any number and does the mod n so that it get, gets back to the standard representation. And really the only purpose of this class is to uh, be able to do normal arithmetic, but really um, enforce the normalization of every element to its standard representative using this this uh, function with the same name okay so i, I said the permutation um, would uh, be induced by the left action and this is of course also you know i was thinking of you know just taking this ring and really defining it uh, abstractly as sort of a, a group and then um, inheriting just the ring structure because for example the left action or the right action is of course again extremely generic and important concept and so it would make sense uh, but in the, then in the end uh, i found they have too few functions to really justify doing some silly class things here and they should really be i don't know if you're motivated and um, you see this code and you want to rewrite it in i don't know uh, haskell maybe or idris then please do so. I, I might even uh, go through it in a video and com make the comparison. These all should all be nice types and you might have do some class inheritance or type inheritance, not just some ugly Python. Um, but in any case, so what I do here is, oh, the, I use the eval function. Um, this eval function is basically just taking some functions, some object in the, in the ring, and then I was just applying f, but I also, as I said, I cast this standard representative uh, lambda, so I get back to the represented. Re like you know, if it is uh, set thirteen, then 
the number 20 is the same as the number 7 and so this casts this star. This is all that this class does, right? Here's an e eval um, and this left action is literally just taking some other number and multiplying from the left side and applying this. Okay, so um, now let's, let's do this uh, helper function first. So the class um, has a function which checks against zero, right? You take any number, for example, in set 13, the number 26 would be also zero because it's 26 is zero mod 13. So this is exactly what this checks. Um, and then some functions that brute force finding if something is zero has root. Um, yeah, here I have the function. This is, I mean, I, w I don't want to bog myself down explaining this code too much, but here I define taking the square as a left action of a Y with itself, a little bit abstract. Um, I define a function which uh, does comparison by squaring a number that's the input and then subtracting another input. And the, um, this, uh, this equation uh, with x variable has a square root if this difference of s any y minus x has a zero, right? I mean, this is like uh, a complicated formulation, but it's sort of with a generalization view and me being able to y use this sort of brute force going through the whole ring and finding zeros. Uh, this is the way you sort of you formulate it in sort of functional way. I hope this is not too too uh, obscure. Um, and uh, why do I need that? Why do I need, uh, need to check uh, for uh, squares? Well, be just because the Legendre symbol, like literally, as we saw, is also definable in these terms, right? This is sort of the magic that it does. And so, since the we are dealing with finite fields, we can also just brute force for a solution, and then this is a valid definition there which is primitive recursive it's just a for loop over a fixed size um and so uh one definition this is uh, sort of the 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 basic definition is this thing returns one if it has a root and zero and minus one if it does not and i can brute force things with the help functions that i just showed you and so this is one definition of the sigma but also we saw that the the, the sort of uh, Gauss definition, I wrote Gauss, but now I'm confused if it's Gauss or Euler um, who did it, um, is that we uh, take this, this Gauss something that I before did manually, uh, now with all my functions here, I'm taking this, this one input to the power of P minus one divided by two, this is exactly this thing here. Um, and then returning uh, plus or minus one accordingly, right? So if it's, uh, if the mod gives you back one, then you're done, it's which is one. If it gives you back P minus one, then this is also minus one, except not in the standard representation. That's why I have to some if else here, but that's, that's, uh, that's that. Um, Okay, and then uh, there's some other functions which basically wrap up for this range function that we saw before, so I can uh, work with this permutation. The, um, the permutation, like applying the left action to everything, this was the definition of this permutation, which happens to be a permutation. I mean, it's not a, I didn't prove that this is always um, injective, but it happens to be, and um, this is the permutation there. This is also really just a coset, right? If I define a multiplication as left action, then uh, listing all the image uh, values of this as function is the coset in the group theoretical sense, in the group, group theoretical definition. And this is what I do here, right? That's how I define the permutation here. Okay, so this was the class. And then um, to assert the theorems, I uh, take any n, right? So in the end, we will loop over all uh, primes and assert the theorems for the primes, but here I define it for n. And then we have the ring, then we can loop over all a's, which are just the element of this ring. 
Um, the cases you know zero one two are sometimes like gen uh, degenerate and if, for example if you take zero and do the left action with zero you always get zero it's not even about uh, permutation anymore it's just mapping to the singleton so I leave this out sometimes but then I um, compute uh, the genre symbol in this one definition um, you saw the reciprocity law right so this is sort of these two exponents and um, the, the claim is, well, let me just show you this again. The claim is in the reciprocity law that this function can also be computed by <laughs> computing the reciproc uh, uh, value in the sense that you just flip the role of, of um, a and p, or in this case, two primes, p and q. Um, you, like this is one way of writing it, but you could also write it as p over q equals some sign which is simple to compute times uh, q over p right so this is just plus minus one or zero so you can just multiply it by both sides by this thing and bring it on the other side um and we're going to validate that that uh, is true by taking this zn and working with the a's but then also taking this set n with not with n but with a and doing it going the other direction and checking this and also we are going to check that the other definition, the, the Gauss definition as I call it here, is the same as the sigma definition. Just yes, yes, yes. And then um, we check that this permutation sigma uh, signature, right, this um, minus one to the power of the count of inversions um, of the permutation, I could call this here permutation, happens to equal also exactly the, the Legendre symbol. Um, and then I plot um, all this this data that is generated. Okay, and I mean, you already saw it, right? I can just run it here. If I call the script, then it does all the asserts, and given the fact that it does not fail, like, I mean, I can, I can, I can force it to fail. If I, <laughs> I don't know, I flip this sign here, then it's just wrong, and then it will throw an assertion error because the theorems don't check out anymore with my, you know, perverted uh, theorem which just is not corresponding to the math mathematical reality um, but if I run it after it being corrected again then it will just check out I happen to go to the number 33 uh, I could run it for uh, however much computational power I have and it just goes for all the the primes in this case 17 it goes for all the uh, elements of the prime uh, of this ring um, treats it as left action applies it to the domain gives me back the permutation I count the inversions right, this is basically almost 17 squared many possibilities uh, like uh, chances of pairs being inversions that happen to be so, so many um, this is the number of permutations and as, a, as a percentage of many I think I think against uh, 17 squared and for all these values it just checks if the all these theorems hold and it, indeed they hold uh, and uh, that's pretty much the video <laughs> um, I hope you learned something about uh, some basic um, theorems and you're more interested in delving into things like the reciprocity theorem um, I will uh, do some more coding, like th this, this script is really just the output, the uh, fallout of some other um, Python that I wrote. If you are interested in that, feel free to comment below. Uh, tell me if you if you made it to the video uh, this far, tell me if you have known all of this. Um, you were just uh, being dragged along uh, because you like my voice. Uh, or if you learned something uh, mind-blowing, um, which it sort of is, it's sort of like surprising things. and a lot of these theorems are not super tr like not super hard but also not super trivial to prove so uh, there's something to it okay and with that said i hope you have a nice weekend i uh, kiss you good night